We just found an overshot flake of basalt, which according to Lauren, we don't find very often. Whoever was napping this did is um, they hit on um, this side and they whacked it and it you know, came off and it curved around the surface of the biface from the sharp edge to the other sharp edge. Um, that narrowed up the overall flake considerably. And we're here in area A and we found a scraper. We do believe that it's a modified flake. Um, specifically, it might be a scraper because the edge is, has small pressure flakes off of it, indicating that it was probably scraped along something. So that was probably what it was used for. Today, over here in area A, we found a hammerstone. You can tell it's a hammerstone because of the pock marks on uh, one end of this, while the other, the other side is relatively smooth. Uh, and this was just used, you know, stone to hammer stuff with. And then the other kind of interesting thing we found is this ground stone, which was uh, used for grinding possibly pieces of rock, uh, working with rock, or uh, possibly for food production. Here we are in uh, Unit F Northwest in a feature we're calling Feature 82 right now. Um, and it's a feature that consists of a dark sediment with, that's different than the surrounding sediment, so we're attempting to figure out what that is. Um, but within here, we found a very interesting piece of debitage that holds some very unique characteristics. And debitage is uh, a flake from the creation of stone tools. I just uncovered a biface, and a biface is a tool that's been worked on two sides. We are missing the base of it, so it's a little hard to determine what it could have been used for, but we're hypothesizing probably a knife. This is level 11 of the northeast quad of Unit N in Area A. Uh, we've recently found a uniface and we're finding it in sediment that's roughly eight to 9,000 years old. And we've cataloged it with this number down here so that we can look at it later and analyze it more in a lab. Some of our students found this lovely little guy here. This is a core, which is a fancy word, or not so fancy word, for basically the raw material that's used to make tools. So this has two sides, and you can see one that has a lot of flakes taken off here, and those are used for a number of different things. And these are not often found in this sort of shape. Um, it would have been a rounder rock, of course, and uh, that large flat flake is really unique and special for really neat tool making. So today we dug out a projectile point. We think that it is possibly a stemmed point. Uh, it also could be a foliate point. Um, the little notches on the side that would show are kind of chipped off, so we're not entirely sure. But this point definitely did its job at some point. Um, both the tip and the base are fractured, so this one definitely went through some use one last time. So the packaging procedure for this is we are going to bag it and then put it in a box and send it back to the lab for analysis. So we're here at the bottom of area B and we've reached cobbles as you can see here, all these rocks. Um, what all these rocks tell us is that the river was once here and you can see that they're kind of angled to sub-angled which means that they haven't been rolling around in the river for very long so the river was not here very long. So it's more likely that this was a beach or a bar. Uh, we don't really find a lot of artifacts down here, so it's not a really important cultural layer, but it does give us that point to start from. 
So we're here in area B uh, and we're next to feature 95 where last year we found a bunch of um, mammal teeth that we're not sure what mammal came from. And this year as we were cleaning the wall we found a mandible um, with a canine in the front and a molar in the back of the mandible. We're not sure if it's a whole piece or not and we'll find out later at the lab. Um, but we think that it could be possibly wolverine but it's pretty large and we're not sure.